Today I want to take a look at client ID, client secret, and how we can check the expiration dates in SharePoint Online. Now client ID and secret are a favorite way to connect into SharePoint sites. Uh, they are created by going to the app reg new and the app invite pages. So just as a refresher, app reg new, and we'll put this over here, and then we'll check to another tab and do app invite. And so from AppRegNew, we generate a client ID, we generate a secret, we give it a title, like PowerShell, we do a domain like localhost, and a URL like localhost. Uh, this allows us to create a client ID with a secret. And then here is where we grant that permissions <clears throat> to a particular site and give it a permission manifest, like full control or maybe site collection only, read only, tenant wide. It's both the scope and the permission level. But in creating these, what do we do about the expiration? What happens when these secrets expire? Are these things good for one year, two years, three years? Which ones are expiring soon? What impact does that have to our applications? So a lot of people are using client ID and secret but I don't think a lot of people are monitoring them for expiration. So here I wanted to take a look at some PowerShell code that can help us with monitoring the expiration. Now invoking this will connect into Azure AD and that's gonna raise a login dialog. We connect into our system. We enumerate a number of service principles with expiration dates. And if there's one in particular you're looking for, that can definitely be done too, where you know, you're actually going through the Azure AD, because keep in mind, authentication is done with Azure AD. SharePoint Online doesn't directly handle authentication. All of that goes through Azure AD. So if there's a particular service principle ID number we're looking for, this will be the way to find it. Yeah, so we have a tenant ID, we have a tenant domain, taking a look right here that Azure AD is what's going to handle all of our authentication. We have a GUID number, we have a tenant ID, and we do have expiration dates for some of these different uh, service principles. So what I wanted to look at is going to be current expiration date, object ID. Let's take this and change it up a little bit. We'll bring the object ID separate. And here we'll say object ID, comma, dollar object, ID, current expiration date. Yes, we'll bring in more of a, kind of a, a pattern that we can parse out. And for that one, let's take it and only write, we'll basically say if current expiration date, then. And we'll come up here and modify a little bit, we'll create an empty collection. Empty collection, there it is. So here we're gonna modify our code a little bit to start off with a empty collection. We're gonna loop through service principles. If we have an expiration date, let me turn that off. And what I'll do is dollar collection, new object, there it is, appending to each. And dollar collection, out grid view, and we'll do the display and grid view. That gives us something a little more tangible to work with. Clear it and we've already authenticated so I can turn off the authentication and we'll execute one more time. Yes. Okay, parameter object ID, specify a string, source principle needs to be provided on line 13 as a parameter for receiving the end date. Clear console, execute again. All right. With those updates, we're able to execute our code. And I think what I'll do is go ahead and write host and make these echo out. We'll do a foreground color, uh, something like yellow, something visible, gives us a display of progress. And the out grid view comes in showing all of these client IDs with their expiration dates. Now, a lot of these are uh, maybe far enough in the future where it's not an issue. A lot of them for next year at 24, uh, but I also have a couple of them that have already expired uh, into 23. So it's kind of a question of, you know, how much lead time for these object IDs and what they're used for and how we want to manage them. 
But I wanted to highlight this as a way of monitoring the client ID and secrets which have been issued into Azure AD, that it is possible, we can get at it with PowerShell, and you know, looking at the environment overall, if you're on the settings page of a site, but you want to go to the tenant, change the URL to dash admin. And when we go to the dash admin endpoint, this is going to look different. The branding's gone. It, it even says these like 48 by 48 things. That's okay. This is a tenant page. It's actually not really supposed to be user visible or frequently used. Um, coming into this, you can go to the app principles page, which will enumerate the client IDs which have been created. The default scope is web. You can also delete it, and then that will do site collection. And it's funny, right here it says to the site, which means web. If we were to take that away, then we'll see the ones for site collection. And now I'm getting two results coming back with an app identifier, which I think is, is actually very helpful. And the app identifier, we can see some of these numbers and do a cross check and bring those in to pair them up with what we have over in our app IDs and secrets. So it's interesting that Azure AD is where the expiration dates are tracked and that we can use PowerShell to get that information. And that helps us be proactive about renewing. Uh, frankly, as easy as it is to create a client ID in secret, you may just want to issue a brand new one, and that could be the way of handling the expirations. But the command to focus on is get the service principal password credential, because password credential is going to be the part that has the expiration, and service pr principal is the client ID. So if you think about those two concepts, client ID is the service principal, Client secret is the password credential, and Azure AD is tracking both of those items. So that's how we can get our expiration dates from Azure AD. Thanks for watching.